Hello everyone, Lewis here. Since Valentine's Day was last week, and we just set up our Shape Oko, I wanted to use this opportunity to make something special for Laura, because I think personally made gifts are always better than store-bought junk. To fit the theme of the holiday, I went onto Thingiverse and searched 3D Heart. Since Laura is very special to me, I opted to choose a file that I found on the second row instead of the first, because I'm a romantic. After importing the STL into Fusion 360, I scaled the model down to a relatively manageable size. Then I entered the CAM workspace. I'm still finagling around for the proper machining settings, but I ended up with a two-sided operation using an eighth inch ball nose end mill. In order to ensure that both sides are machined symmetrically, I milled stock and drilled indexing holes aligned with the threaded insert spacing on the wasteboard. I modeled the dimensions to have significant margin around the heart, mainly because I don't know what I'm doing and it seemed like the right thing to do. Using the painter's tape and super glue work holding method, I then uploaded the G-code and let it rip. You'll notice that the end mill isn't cutting on two sides of the stock because apparently there was an issue while homing that set my X and Y axis a bit wonky. Uh, this will bite me in the butt later. I'm tempted to give credit to NYC CNC and Winston Moy for being a wealth of information in the machining world, but realistically they would probably projectile vomit after watching this terrible toolpath, so in an attempt to save face, I'll leave it as I still have a lot to learn. Using the paper method to zero my axes, I switched end mills and started machining the 3D heart. The first side came out relatively good despite the fact that I murdered about 5 end mills. If you guys know a better way to restart a project after detonating end mills, please share in the comments below because I'd love to save time from cutting air. Before setting up the second side, I slowed down my feeds and speeds and removed the negative stock to leave because I wasn't confident that I had positioned the tabs correctly to hold the heart in place. This also bites me in the butt later. Once the machining was done, I used the Dremel to remove the heart from the stock, which took a bit of time because I forgot that I included some stock to leave during the first operation. And just like that, a lopsided heart. In hindsight, I should have made sure that the stock was machined to the correct dimensions and made sure my homing and offset positions were dialed in correctly. Using a file and some sandpaper, I deburred the edges and gave it a more refined, or at least a semi-intentional shape. Compounding rookie mistakes led to a misaligned part, but I ended up learning so much in the process. And Laura appreciated the character the heart has because it reminds her that her husband is impatient, yet determined to see things through no matter how wonky. If you like this video, please check out our other projects and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.